Okay, you know what? You're illegal. Hi, I'm Kayla Amanda. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here. I'm working on the pre-planning stages of my revision process. It's all of the things that I want to get done before I actually reread my manuscript. Things like character tension and the motivation for my leads, the sort of romantic dynamics that I want to play with, and final world building details. It also is supposed to mean revisiting my outline to make sure the changes I made while I was drafting are actually reflected in the outline so that I can keep them consistent as I reread the manuscript and then go on to draft two. Supposed to. I made pretty good headway on the first half of my list and this is how that went. So my desk has been organized, fresh coffee has been made, I think it's time that I stop fucking around and actually do some of that editing that I need to do. I think that I also need to prioritize the remaining things on my list because they're not all created equal and some of them kind of flow from one another. Like Kira and Alex's dynamic will change the kind of person that I want Alex to be in order for Kira to be interested in him, and those changes will impact plot decisions that they make, so they need to come before my outlining work. And I think my outlining work has to come before I make that list of changes that I want to read for because a lot of the things on that list could become completely irrelevant as I edit them out of the outline. The only one that doesn't have a very specific place to go is my shapeshifter world building because while I think it could impact Alex and Kira's relationship dynamic, I think their relationship dynamic could impact it more. So maybe it goes after Alex and before outlining. There's something about a whiteboard being specifically temporary and designed to be wiped away that helps me be a lot less rigid in my thinking and a lot less focused on every idea I have being correct or perfect, so I can just be generative with what I'm doing and actually come up with more ideas instead of getting bogged down. I just listed out a bunch of dynamics and a bunch of ideas that I had for their characters to try to get a sense of what was going to work for me. So I've been messing around in Alex's character sheet and I think I got somewhere with it. Um, I still want to iron some stuff out and get a better sense of him. I know that I had an order I wanted to do this in, but I cannot for the life of me remember if figuring out my shapeshifter lore came after ironing out Alex's character or after unfucking my outline. So I'm gonna have to go review all my footage and find the part where I talked about that because I should have written it down and I didn't. I don't hold anything in my brain if I don't write it down, which is why I have my bullet journal with me all the time. Excuse me. I think the fuck not. No. Hello, it is end of day and I have filmed very little today. Unfortunately, my workday is like not interesting to film and because I work with children and youth with support needs, nothing I do I can share with the internet. It's all super private because it's children's medical information. So there's just not a lot to film. Did I stay up too late last night reading? Yes. Does that mean that I overslept this morning and I'm way behind on my morning shit? I'll say yes. Why did past me choose violence? I could have done anything else, but I chose that. 
as suspected, my outline is pretty trash. Um, and for some reason, I didn't leave notes for myself when I changed things because I assumed that I would just remember, which never in my entire life have I just remembered something like that. You can tell if someone's like kind of a furry when they're like half man, half animal form for their werewolves or like hot. <laughs> Like in some of them, they're like fully nasty. And in some of them, you're like, that's just a buff dude with fur. You wanna fuck him. Did I end up on that Zoom call for almost three and a half hours? I sure did. Am I eating dinner at 9.30 at night? I sure am. But was it worth it? Yes, it fucking was. Uh, it was so great to just talk to some writer friends and to get some feedback on what I'm doing with Kira and Alex and Alex as a character and to, give them some feedback on their stories and to talk shit about hot actors and just get some friend time, which in a pandemic has been weird and hard. And it's really nice to get to spend some of that just like bullshit time with friends where you're just sort of chatting at them about nothing. So I think it was really worth the loss of editing time, especially because I did do some work on my own this morning. So it's not like a wasted day. So here's the thing. I was making really good headway on my list and I knocked a bunch of stuff out in like about a week and that was great but now I'm on the outline part and it's hard and daunting and my current outline is trash and needs so much work that um, I don't want to do it. <laughs> I'm avoiding it like a motherfucker because I have no interest in that. I am afraid of tackling it so that's where I'm at with that which is not ideal but we're gonna do it. We're gonna get through this together because it's gotta get done. I cannot not finish another project. I have to get this to a point where I would be willing to query it. I can decide if I wanna query it or not later, but I have to get it to the point where I would be ready to query it because I never do that. And the longer I don't do that, the harder it will be for me to get there because I will have taught myself the habits of not getting that far and not being ready and those are habits I want to unlearn. And that's kind of where I peter out. Uh, something about revising the outline is a real sticking point for me, and I'm struggling to understand what the root of that is. One of the most interesting things about this whole authortube experience has been contextualizing my writing problems. Finding the words to explain it to an audience means that I have to really complexly look at it and consider why it is that I'm feeling something. We've already talked about how my reticence to finish things comes packaged with my fear of being vulnerable in my writing, of putting my work out for someone to judge and not like, because I have invested a lot of my ego and a lot of my sense of self in being a good writer. So if someone doesn't like it, that must mean they don't like me, even though that is totally not true. <laughs> That's just me being self-sabotaging and me getting in my own way. So why is it that revising my outline makes me not want to continue? Why is it that I'm finding all of these reasons not to finish that part of the project so I don't have to move on with rereading my manuscript? Part of it could be that I don't want to reread my manuscript because I find it deeply cringy to read my own work, even when it's objectively good and other people like it. I see every mistake I made, everything I didn't do right, and it's very difficult for me to reread it. Where I can get lost in an Alona Andrews book and devour it in six hours, I would take like two weeks to read my own work of the same length. Just because, you know, I want to violently throw it against the wall every ten minutes when I realize I've made a typo, which is again not really a big deal, but feels world-ending to me. So if I don't finish revising my outline, I don't actually have to reread the manuscript, and I can save myself from having to cringe at my own work. But I also don't love being wrong, and revising my outline means sitting in a space where I have to dwell in my wrongness. When I'm developing character dynamics or working on what Alex's motivations are, it's not really about how I was wrong, it's just about how something is absent. Whereas sitting in my outline and trying to figure out all of the places that my pacing sucks or that I need to add things or that I need to take things away is really sitting in a space where I have to be honest with myself about something that I'm not good at in writing and I want to be good at all parts of writing. There's such a narrative around like flow state and the muse and being inspired with your writing that I just never feel. Writing doesn't really come easily to me. It's something that I work at and I love and I'm passionate about and I will never stop doing, but it is work. I've occasionally felt the flow state around a couple of fanfics, but like a 3000 word dirty fanfic is not the same as a novel length project in which I need to work on 
pacing, climax, character dynamics, relationships, building sexual tension, all this shit that I don't necessarily find myself doing very well in the first pass. And because writing can be such a solitary experience that you only see when it is at its most finished, it's hard to remind myself that it's okay to be bad at it. It's okay to not have a perfect first draft. But of course it's fine that I have an imperfect first draft. I really need to get over myself and not think that I, of all people, am gonna be perfect right out the gates. This is a learning process. And apparently what I'm learning from this is that I'm going to need to continue to remind myself that I don't need to be perfect and that I can't expect perfection. At every stage of this, I've run into the same kind of roadblock around wanting to get everything right the first time and wanting to avoid any situation in which I'm forced to confront the fact that I'm not right all the time and that I'm not going to get things perfectly all the time. The other things that I've picked up from this process that are not so emotionally heavy are one, that I need to find a way to leave notes for myself in my outline. As I'm drafting, I make changes to my general plot because my pacing is weird and bad and I come up with better ideas. So I need to have a system for updating my outline that reflects the date of the change and the extent to which the change was made. Like, did I just make it in my outline? Did I apply it to my manuscript? Did I apply it to my manuscript from the beginning or only from this point? Have I left notes on it or just not touched it at all? Because all of my outlining is done in spreadsheets and I can give myself conditional formatting, I think I can actually come up with a pretty good system for how to tell myself this information, but it will probably be messy and over the top and color coded, which is just how I like my outlines. And number two is that next time I draft a novel, I need to get my romantic dynamic down from day fucking one. Without being really, really clear on the dynamic between my leads, I let one of them be kind of boring and pointless. Alex's motivations didn't really matter because Alex didn't really matter. I didn't know what I wanted to do with him and Kira, so I let him kind of fade into the background. So next up is forcing myself through the uncomfortable prospect of sitting with my outline and looking at all of the things that I didn't do very well. And then rereading my manuscript and sitting with all of the things that I didn't do well in that. I think April is going to be like a tough month for me emotionally, just like dwelling in the ways that I am not perfect. And I think it will be hard, but like maybe good for me. Maybe it'll help bring me down a notch and not expect so much from myself. If you have any great ideas on how to make outline hell less hellish for me, please leave them down below. Also, if you know how to make rereading my manuscript less of a cringe inducing, violence inspiring hellscape for me, that would be great. I would really love to hear about it. Any other questions, comments, complaints, concerns, go ahead and leave them down below. Like, subscribe, do that good engagement shit. If you are looking for me anywhere else, you can find me pretty much everywhere as Kayla Amanda. That is K-A-Y-L-U-G-H-M-A-N-D-A, -A -A, and I'll see you next time. Don't do it! <gasps> oh my goodness! This naughty man!